Hello, guys. Welcome back in to another episode of the Out of Our Minds podcast. I feel like I say the same thing every single time. <laughs> and, and probably in the same tone. Yeah. Same tone, too. Like, like same cadence. Back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Ding. And we're back. Hey, guys. Welcome back in. We're happy to have you here. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Today's topic is going to be... Oh, it's so good. It's so good. We're going to be talking all about this mindset shift between a long-term and short-term mindset. So shifting from the short-term to the long-term mindset. Okay, I'm like out of breath. I'm like, why am I feeling nervous right now to be on the mic? <laughs> I'm like... It's such a potent episode. It's just so good. And it's so close to home because anyone who's has a fucking dream and is an entrepreneur and has a vision and is like le- leading this path feels this to their core yeah also we were just like in full flow mode with work and yeah. um then i like ran and made lunch and now we're here on the mics i'm like feeling fired up from this magic find that i just drank Dude, it's so good same i feel like we actually got so much done in that meeting sometimes nikki and i do we do like superpower hours of like two hours of co-working and sometimes in the past i'll get like I feel like I just get distracted like I'm a fucking dog looking for squirrels out the window. You need to not like, work next to a window. <laughs> I know it's dangerous. I'll be like, dude, there's a stray dog on my property. And I'm like, look at it. And you're like, can we not do this? So anyway, we were so productive today. Like I'm definitely feeling, I mean, dude, the feeling of flow state is unmatched. And I feel like when you have that, like, it's like a gentle, but like very powerful focus. And yes. Just, like tapped in. I mean, yeah. So I got, I got Bella hooked on, um, magic mind. If you guys don't know what magic mind is, it's, it's these little, little green shots. I already drank mine. Um, oh, yeah, not, I was going to make a little latte of mine. You're going to drink a little more. Yeah. To try she's, been, it out. she's been dosing hers, but they are freaking magic. I started drinking these back in LA because there was a coffee shop near my house called little lunch. And one day I went there and I don't really drink that much coffee just because it's not really my vibe. I'll have matcha, cacao. Oh my God, there it goes. And one day I walked into this coffee shop and they had these little magic mind bottles and I drank one and they had a workstation place in the coffee shop. So I sat down with my laptop and was doing work and I went into such a deep flow state that I literally went home that day. And the next day I woke up and I was like, I need to go back and buy another magic mind. More. <laughs> and I remember walking into the coffee shop and one of the workers there was like, oh, welcome back. I'm like, yeah, sorry. I'm not here for the coffee. I'm here for the magic mind. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Wait, this, co- this is really good. Oh, this did, is your I first time having it, it over, with milk. I just poured it over cashew milk, over ice. Yeah. It's so good. It's like, cause it's got a little bit of sweetness, like just enough. Yes. It's yeah. Really tasty. I personally like to chug them, um, but they You're are. Like, I'm the- going to take it straight to the dome. <laughs> <laughs> they are the perfect replacement if you are wanting that like good flow state, heightened sense of energy without the jitters. And it truly hits. Like yeah. I have not gotten into such deep flow state with any other like adaptogen or like nootropic besides the mix that they have in this. It's incredible. Yeah. And I'm it's so happy so that I got you hooked because now when we're on our I know. work calls and together, I'm... we like cheers together and we're like, magic mind time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm so big on, I've never, ever, ever liked traditional like coffee drinks and stuff because th- I just don't feel good on them. And I've always been such a matcha girly. And this, I think this is like incredible because it has matcha in it and all these other things that make it actually feel like you're not just getting a little energy boost, but it's like clean, it's sustained. You're getting vitamin D in this. Like it's, it's, it's got really, all the really beautiful. I feel yeah, like this is a great. good replacement too, for when you're going out. Ooh, like if yeah. you're, cause I haven't been drinking and I know you don't drink and this is just like the perfect little like, Ooh, pick me up type of vibe. But yeah, drink your magic mind, get more into that flow state. I already chugged mine down. Yeah. And um, we actually have a very exciting little offer for you guys. If you want to try Magic Mind out, they have a limited offer you can use now that gets you up to 48% off a first subscription or 20% off of one-time purchase. So good. And you can use the code OM20, that's O-O-O-M-2-0, OM20 at checkout or claim it at magicmind.com slash out of our minds. 
And you can find all that info in the description, in the show notes. Go try it out and then message us and tell us what you think because I feel like you are going to love this, especially when you're just like a conscious creator, a conscious, like ambitious person that's got shit to get done, but you don't want to like sacrifice your mental well-being or your health or whatever. So go try it out. Magicmind.com slash out of our minds. Ohm 20 at checkout. Let us know how you like it. All right, guys, let's get back into um, the episode after you go buy your magic mind. <laughs> and yeah, definitely let us know how you guys like that. But as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, we're going to be talking about the difference between a short term and long term mindset and how this is truly such a beautiful avenue to switch over into a long term mindset when it comes to achieving success within your business. So I'll start by just sharing my perspective on this and how this has really transformed the way that I approach my business. And just to give you guys some insight, I'm going to be I'm going to be like mentioning a few comments that Sarah Zula shared on a live that she did that was all about this topic of switching over from a long term mindset to a short term mindset. Short term um, to long term. And if you guys want to, you said the reverse. Short term to long term, but. Yes. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Switching <laughs> over from a short term mindset to a long term mindset and how this is really where things start to heat up with our journey that we're on. So I'm sure just for you guys listening, like you being tuned into this episode right now, you are someone as Bella and I both are too, who came here with a mission planted in their heart. Like you came down here knowing that you have gifts. Well, Maybe you have forgotten, but your soul knows you have gifts that are meant to be shared. And there is a purpose that sits in your heart that you came down here to live by and to live through. And when we are so connected to that vision, it can start to put pressure on us to make us feel like we have to achieve it overnight. Yeah. And that everything has to drop in tomorrow. And as soon as we make the business Instagram account, all of the results have to come in. And as soon as we launch our coaching website, all of a sudden, all the clients have to come in. And because we are so connected to this mission, we start to take on this short-term mindset that puts us in this state of stress and overwhelm. And if you're feeling this way, know that I relate to you deeply. I have been there and it can feel so frustrating. It can feel like the one thing you launch and you don't get results on, it's like the end of the world. And with a short-term mindset, essentially what we're doing is we are defining our gifts by the immediate results that we're having. Mm. And this is a really dangerous game to play because your gifts are innate. They are inherent and they are a part of you. Your worthiness is innate your mission, your purpose, it all lives within you and really like let this sink in if you're listening and you're like, damn, this is really resonating. Like your gifts that you have to share with the world, maybe yes, you will gain more of a skill set around the way that you deliver them or the thing that you're doing or the avenue that you're sharing them through. Or maybe you'll get better at, um, like let's say for you, Bella, like with the the sound journeys and the breathwork journeys like of course you're going to start to gain like a really refined skill set when it comes to mixing music and the way that you share and channel during those of course but the gifts that you have to do that are never going to change like that is a gift that lives within you that you can do now which you're already doing and it's going to be a gift that you tap into in deeper ways when you're standing on a stage in front of like a hundred freaking thousand people (laughs) yeah yeah. <laughs> like the gift aspect of that is never going to alter or change. So when we take on this short-term mindset, what we start to do is we start to, the ego starts to define our gifts by the results we're getting. And this is something that you can relate to. Like I can think back to when I was launching my first like group program and I only got like a few people to sign up and I had this whole like vision of having like 20 people in the group program And I like put together this whole program and I was like, this is going to be amazing. And only a few people signed up and it ended up being incredible with beautiful souls that signed up and it was just a magical experience. But in that moment, I started to make the result mean something about my gifts. And this is where we get to lean into the alleviation of the pressure when we release the short-term mindset of thinking this journey is going to just 
materialize overnight and we're going to get to the paradox of yes actually things can also mm-hmm. drop in in an instantaneous fac- fashion but this mindset shift is where we get to stop defining ourselves by how much money we're making how many followers we have how many likes we have and i'm quoting some things that sarah mm-hmm. was saying in her live because it was just so powerful um but i'm curious if like this is something that's connecting to you bella because i think it's something that's so powerful to talk about i would love for you to also share like the beauty of having this like vision and being honest about where you're at with that vision Mm -hmm. and like the power that you have to lean into that long-term vision through the short-term decisions that you're making yeah yeah just this whole topic is so near and dear to me because it's something that honestly i think has been probably one of like the biggest aspects of my path and my journey so far to navigate and to work through and just to really think about because I remember so vividly when I first, it's like all the things you're saying of you think we we live in this like immediate gratification society. And even sometimes that like manifestation work will, you know, maybe you're like misinterpreted or make it create this pressure of like, you know, I quit my nine to five. And so the things should be happening and like everything should just come together. And I had that experience a couple years ago when I left my nine to five or like three years ago at this point, I can't remember, but of the summer right after. So it was only like three months in where there was just like not much happening. And I thought I would be further at that point. And I remember feeling so like down on myself and just waking up and being like, boohoo. Well, like, what was me? Like, why is my vision not here yet? Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, why can't I just have it drop in overnight? And it made me fucking miserable because I was like, a, like this weird, not positive, not like helpful, conducive pressure on myself to like make it all drop in instantaneously. But from a place of thinking that like, it, it's not like an openness to miracles. It was like a, a forcing almost of like, I need this to happen now type of thing. And then mm. shifting and, and remember and kind of reminding myself like, this is the long game like you're building something big and it's okay for it to take time it's okay to like look for how to enjoy it and make it about what's right in front of you and connect to a bigger mission and a bigger purpose and yeah to just like give myself permission to even like trial and error and like just experiment with it and really sink into the fact that it is a process and that's okay. And I just remember at the beginning that being very visceral and like, just for people listening to know, like it is such an integral and normal part of when you're an entrepreneur or a visionary or you have whatever vision to have that duality of wanting it so badly and wanting that thing that feels so far off. And then also being, finding a way to like, make the process and the now enjoyable and like Nikki saying kind of like detach from the further the the thing that's further out so that you can really be here with it and enjoy the journey because if not that's the typical parable of like you get to the end and you didn't even enjoy it and then you want more and it like didn't yeah. actually fucking you know the thing you thought was going to make you happy didn't make you happy because you didn't you know you forgot to find happiness in the now moment and I think that's like the duality and the paradox to kind of hold. And I think it's important to talk about because you can get kind of confused in a way and think like, you know, am I supposed to just not want things in the future? Am I supposed to only like be satisfied with what's happening in front of me? But like, what if I do want more? Right. And that's the paradox here because we being on this path of evolution, like our soul is bringing us on this journey where there always is going to be more. Mm -hmm. And it's like that dance of being so present with the process while also being able to hold that really fiery vision Mm -hmm. that we have. And I feel like I want you to share a little bit about like what it feels like to have that really big vision. Like what does that feel like in the body? What does that sometimes make you feel like in the now? And I feel like this is a super relatable experience that you experience in a really deep way. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I am someone who has had the same visual in my third eye. Honestly, I can venture to say as long as I've remembered, like from a very young age or just at least, 
you know, early like tween years when you start to have this, you know, idea of like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like all that. And I've always had this vision and whenever I, I picture it, it's like, it's me and I know that I'm supposed to go and do that. And so you have this initial feeling of like, you're sitting, you're, you're painting the three D picture. You're like, I'm sitting here on the couch and that's, I'm clearly not literally doing that right now. So for one, you're like, you feel that instant like pressure and spark because it's meant to move you. It's meant to cause pressure. Like yeah. literally like this is the human cool thing about human design is the pressure centers is the root and the crown. When you get an inspiration, it's supposed to kick shit up because it is meant to get you moving. Like that's why right. it feels like that. And when that's in even bigger, let's say scale or whatever, because it's different for everybody. Like the thing that really activates you for some one person, it could be opening up a bakery in their town. And for another person, it could be selling out a fucking stadium. Like those are very different things, but they're, they're like big visions for both those people. So for me, it's always felt like so charged and not in like a, it's charged in like the fiery, like this is a potential that already lives within you and you're meant to explore. And it, it has different feelings because some days you can be almost um, like uh, pigeonholed into looking at the fact that you aren't necessarily doing that right now. And so you can opt into feeling like, well, shit, I'm far away from that. And that's a very visceral feeling to feel quote unquote far, both time or distance or in who you are from that version of you, because it's so vivid and it's like so exciting. And you just know that that would be so fucking cool and fun and like would <clears throat> create such a positive impact on yourself and other people in your life. And then it can also be so inspiring in a positive way where you almost like believe in yourself because you understand that our visions are not by accident. And so if I see myself on a stage, even if right now I'm like, I don't know the thing that would quote unquote get me on a stage, I can be like, damn, I must be meant for a yeah, fucking you do. state. Well, I like have ideas, but it's like, you know, <laughs> at least like sometimes you don't, you don't know the exact road. Like you can't really perfectly plot it out. <clears throat> but nonetheless, the fact that I'm like, okay, if I see myself doing this, I'm fucking meant to do it. That's so cool. And then you can sit here and be like, wow, like I have this within me. I would not be visualizing it if it wasn't for me. And it wasn't, yeah, if it wasn't meant for me. So that's in and of itself, I think, where the duality comes into play because you have that fire that you don't really want to put it out. It's there for a reason. Like it's supposed to quote unquote pressure you, move you to get things going because your soul wants to experience that in this, ve in this vessel of your, of your body and in this lifetime. But you also want to let it give you like confidence and belief and to be like, wow, like I am already incredible. I already must have this gift within me if I am visualizing myself or, or getting the sense or the synchronicity or the image or someone's telling me like, hey, you could be so good at this. Like I, I've had that my whole life. I've had people in my like close proximity or random people being like, are you, like you totally are meant to be like a famous person. I've always been like, damn, okay. Like someone else is seeing in this in me too. Like that must mean it's for real. And we all have that different specific thing that we see within us. And then sometimes like God like reflects it back to you. So just know like that in and of itself holds a very, very potent duality that sometimes feels like they're opposites. But I think just on the nature of what duality is that you learn to hold both and you learn to kind of dip more into the positive iteration of it, which would be to give you motivation and self-belief and to view yourself as this capable, worthy person that already has what it takes to complete that thing. And then that's where you start mm -hmm. to think about like, what, how can I move the needle forward on this today in a way that is satisfying and makes me feel like the fairy, like abundance of life. And that also is like, and we're going to go and we're going to make it even like bigger, you know, next week or in like in the next now moment. Yeah. I just love hearing the passion around the vision that you have, because I think it's very relatable and it connects us to our own passion for our visions. Like 
hearing you talk about the passion for your vision helps me claim mine even more. And I think all the Omis out there, you guys hold a very big dream in your heart. And I just want you to know, like, from Bella and I, you're meant to have that fucking vision, like 100%. And the conversation we're having now is like to really embody this long-term mindset when it comes to fulfilling that vision and to see it as this beautiful journey that you are on where you are literally becoming the person that can actually carry out that vision. Like every step of this path is so freaking sacred because you are shedding parts of yourself where you one day wake up as the person that becomes the being that can like carry that vision out and I think that's why there's such a paradox here because yes maybe there is distance but also it kind of does drop in instantaneously the moment we shift into that being that can carry that out. Mm-hmm. So there's there's paradoxes yeah. here, and I'm going to go into it in more detail. Um, but the first thing I want to say is that when um, I was watching this live with Sarah of her talking about this, I like put a comment in the chat because it came to me so clearly that having a long-term mindset is the logical mind's way of detachment. Mm. So... In order for us to materialize our dreams, we have to be in the right energy in order to successfully accomplish the tasks, the, the tasks that it takes to get there. So if you think about it, like every single thing that you do is you interacting with the field. It's you interacting with the matrix, the divine matrix. It's you sending out the message of what you wish to create in life. It's through your actions. It's through your thoughts. It's through your energy. And this whole equation is so important to understand because when we take a long-term mindset, we start to look at the energy and play with it in a way that benefits the materialization of our dreams. Mm. If we have the energy that it has to happen overnight, this is the analogy that Sarah made of having to happen, having it, excuse me, there's an itch on my nose, having it um, drop in overnight that pressure for that to happen in that way, you can imagine as like a closed fist and nothing can be received when you have the closed fist and you're feeling that pressure. So having a long-term mindset is our way to show the logical mind that, okay, we can begin to open our fists up. We can begin to just slightly detach and understand that we still are holding that vision but we're going to start to work on this equation of what actually helps us materialize our dreams, which is to be present. I mean, this can be different for any, any, everyone. Like you figure out what energy works for you. But for me, it's like to be present, to be confident in like what I'm doing, to own my gifts, to feel the abundance within and to like activate that inner power. And the way that I go about cultivating that energy is to see it as a game that I'm in and to see it as a journey where every part of this is really, really sacred. Mm -hmm. And that's where you start to tap into those energies and all of a sudden you're releasing the air from the tire and releasing the pressure and unclasping the the hands and unfisting the hands. And all of a sudden you go into this like energetic state of being in flow with the journey that you're meant to go Mm -hmm. on. And it's a really beautiful process because when we are thinking about the long-term mindset, there's just like so many beautiful things that occur because we start to embrace the everyday processes. And I always like to remind myself that like your dream life is your dream life because the processes that you do in the everyday of your dream life are fulfilling Mm. and they're fun. So if the everyday processes of what you're working on aren't fulfilling you, then you're not on the right path yeah that's my own perspective i think that like your highest timeline yes there are things that are really fucking tedious and that are not in alignment with what makes you happy like if you're running a business and you're like i fucking hate using social media then sure maybe that isn't like a thing to be like oh if you're not fulfilled doing that it's not your dream that's not what i'm saying but like the everyday processes of like the thing that you are putting your energy into that is in alignment with like your gifts and you're like giving out your gifts if that's not fulfilling you then maybe there's a different avenue of Mm -hmm. like sharing your gifts. 
and I want you to talk about this too, because I know you just navigated mm-hmm. like a moment of recognizing a pivot in your mm-hmm. journey. But I think there's a really clear way to see if you're like on the right path where even having a long-term mindset is beneficial for you. Because if you wouldn't wake up and do the thing like every day, just for like the pureness of your heart, because it brings you so much fulfillment and joy, then it may not be the avenue that your gifts are wanting to be expressed. Mm -hmm. But a long-term vision is really easy to take on when you are connected to a mission that is bigger than yourself and a purpose that is bigger than yourself. And I think that's where the universe comes in and sees like, oh my goodness, like they are, they are seeing the bigger mission that they are here to complete. So if you're out there starting your own business or doing something with an entrepreneurial journey, really start to feel into like, what did your soul come here to help with? Like, look at your gifts and then think about like, what is the purpose and the mission that your soul came down here to complete? Mm. And if you can have that at the back of your mind, as you're completing the daily task and as you're moving through life with that long-term vision, while also remembering that miracles can drop in at any single second as you're embodying that energy, then that's like the secret sauce to her, to it all. It's like being a big enough being to be with the process of becoming and understanding that you're in the process of shifting into that energy and becoming the person that can carry it out while also being in the energy of like the abundance Mm. and the joy of the present moment and the process and while also understanding that every single thing can occur any any single thing can occur in any single moment and that limitless possibilities exist so it's just expanding yourself energetically to be able to hold all of these truths without thinking it needs to be like one or the other that's where we unlock like a completely different level of being because you're it's almost like you're unlocking the ability to be human while also unlocking the the ability to live through like the more like spiritual yeah. truths and if you can marry the two of those like how you were saying marrying the two that's where you unlock like living in yes. the 3d world but with the powers of the spiritual world yes i love that it's basically it's the middle way because it's like yeah knowing yeah and holding both and i i think it's so important because also people get really quickly either convinced or, or i don't know if this is just like a tribal thing we do or something but you think that like multiple truths can exist at once or that if you are going to live this way then you can't live that way and it's like we're so much more multi-dimensional than that like we are able to live as like these complex multi-dimensional beings so i love that and i think that's basically at the crux of like what it is to have the long-term mindset is you fully know that both are existing at the same time um and -hmm. i love what you were saying about when things are not fulfilling you right now day to day because i've been sharing this with you but basically as I've shared many times with this big vision of mine, I kind of realized in the last week that I almost like convinced myself that I needed to, that I need, I kind of, I guess I like inadvertently was with certain aspects of my um, business, like non-OM related, like we both have personal businesses with certain aspects of that, that I was almost I guess inadvertently looking at it as the short term because I was like, well, when I get this figured out, then I can use that as a stepping stone to then work on the bigger dream. And sometimes that's the case. Like sometimes that makes sense where you're like, you know, one step at a time, this will then lead to that. But I realized that I, I kind of had to take stock of like everything that I'm doing and ask myself, like, is it actually fulfilling me? Is it making me happy? And as a generator, I was like, I need to have almost like a hierarchy of excitement because, you know, A, just as a person and B, I think as a generator in human design, like I can get excited about a lot of stuff. I can be like, yeah, that's cool. That's fun. I'll do that. Like, okay, that's, that's exciting. And then all of a sudden you realize like you kind of convinced yourself that you, your, your dream almost was like too big to happen now. And that's where that duality of feeling like your vision so far off that sometimes you end up holding yourself back from taking action because you're overwhelmed by the bigness of it because you don't believe that parts of it can drop in now. And I honestly had this really cool thing happen where 
one, I like fully admitted, I was like, I am going to shed and not put time into the things that don't, you know, hit the mark on my hierarchy of excitement. And I'm going to believe and start doing things that really, really excite me and are moving the needle forward on the bigger, you know, grand, like big life vision and thing that I see myself doing. And from that pivot, I then experienced like a mini synchronicity where I've I've been pitching myself, I'm going pitching myself to teach my breath and sound modality in town because I want to do more IRL things. And I'm like, well, if you see yourself on stage, fucking get on a stage now and bless my partner for being like, why aren't, why aren't you fucking doing IRL things now and being on a stage now if you want to be? And I was like, that's a damn good question. Why am I not doing that right now? And I had sort of like convinced myself and this just happens when you like get on track and things are going like just well enough that you're like generally happy and all good. But then someone's like, are you really enjoying every ounce of it? And you're like, I actually am not. And that's okay. And now I'm going to shift. And so I made this decision of like, we are going to, we're going to stop thinking that I have to wait and like come up with this like sidestep plan before I can experience the big vision. Like we can experience it now and we can both do micro versions of it that feel doable now. And we can be open to the miracles of what can happen when you show the universe, like I'm fucking doing it now. And then the universe is like, boom, I got you. And I happen to have a a close friend connection that is friends with the owner of one of the studios that I emailed. And she was like, I'll connect you with the owner of the studio. Like what's fuck like random shit like that. And it's like that I think that's like the universe helping you and being like, oh, finally, she's actually doing the thing that she wants to do and that it makes her fulfilled and happy and like show her gifts. Like here, I've been waiting to help you. I just needed you to fucking get on the path, you know? (laughs) (laughs) But how do you feel like the long-term mindset towards that big vision is like helping you alleviate the pressure? Because now you're giving yourself permission to like do the things like go to the local yoga studio. Yeah. I think I'm just seeing how it's like there's the satisfaction of knowing that you're taking a little step and moving the needle forward every day in the present moment. And almost because I believe in the bigger vision, I, I, I have been believing it, but now it's like, I have the action behind the belief that now I'm like, it, it almost helps you feel more certain and less worried about the big vision happening because you, yeah, I think I'm like, yeah, it's like putting a little more wind behind the belief by pairing it with an action and being like, you know, ultimately what I'm seeking in the future is going to be something that I experience in the moment. So why don't I put myself in the energy and almost in like the law of attraction, almost in like the act as if energy. And just, it's funny because it's it's just a slight adjustment. Like I really have been working towards this vision still for years. And like obviously arguably my whole life, right? Before my conscious mind even realized it. But it's kind of just a slight adjustment of like priorities and the conversation that you have with yourself and the things that you're deciding to do that you're like today we get to make it happen and we don't have to be in the waiting room and like yes again there's things of like I'm not going to sell out a fucking Coachella concert tonight but maybe I can in five years and today I can do this thing that I know is energetically matched with that and is me being like I I see you vision I believe you so I'm going to do the thing I know that my self needs there's like a it's like this thing where they say like the version of you in 12 months or 12 years from now needs something from you today. So what are you going to do today? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where you do both, where you're like, believe in myself today, take the action today, be present today, become the person I meant to be today. And then me in 12 years is like, thank you, because now that's me in the long term. Exactly. Like these little things are helping you become that person that can then hold the space for all those people in that crowd. Yes. Yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah. And I feel like it's a dance of like, Because the ego is going to come in. This is the thing. Like the mission's planted in your heart. And I'm seeing this clearly now that we're like having this conversation. I feel like what happens is like the mission is planted in your heart and it's so pure. And then the ego comes in and starts to like identify with it and make it like all about like 
like who we are mm-hmm. in which yes it is about like who we are in the world and like like oh like i'm gonna be like seen by like doing all yes. this and like people are gonna give me the validation and the recognition for like having these gifts and like the ego kind of like can take it and put you on this path of making all the results mean mm-hmm. something where the soul is like no 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 like you're literally completing your journey right, right here like even just by like speaking into this microphone yes. right now like you're like your soul's like no no you're doing it like you're already doing it and then as you expand the way you can give that gift out to the world also will expand with you in like a very divine yes. way and I feel like that's where we start to access the deep levels of fulfillment no matter where we're at on the journey because we start to see and change our perspective from a limiting view of like I'm not there yet while also being able to hold the paradox that the vision is out in the Uh future but to dissolve that perception and to see oh like my soul is like I'm already here right and I'm already doing it and I think that's where like we also unlock the happiness is when we take away the distance of like oh no I'll be happy once I get to the end vision but like the end vision is a fleeting moment right. like if we're gonna just put our happiness on the end vision then you're only ever gonna be happy when you're let's say for example like the um the vision of like being on a stage like when you're on the stage mm-hmm. or um some people will have the the end goal of like hitting a certain amount of like followers or like having a certain amount of money and like you have that moment of being like oh my god like I hit a 10k month mm-hmm. and like oh, da, da. but like then that goes away right. and what's left over is who you believe you are and the way that you navigate life and the emotions that you hold and finding that fulfillment in like these little processes are where you actually start to wake up and realize like oh my god it's about the fucking journey yes. like that tacky little sign that hangs in some mom's kitchen like it being about the journey yeah. like it actually is true <laughs> so I feel like this is just like the dance in life. And I want to also note here that like I'm sharing my own perspective of what works for me with taking on a long term mindset while also embodying like the truths of limitless possibilities. And Bella and I were talking about this before the episode that like this is all a game of energy and perception and you have this goal and this vision, but then you get to work backwards in seeing like depending on like how deep you go in manifestation and like what your beliefs are and the way that you perceive how you create your own reality, you go backwards and start to recognize, Oh, like, okay, like this is the, this is the way that I actually create that. Like it's an inner game. And with this being an inner game, it's all a game of energy. It's all a game of energy, thought, emotion, energy, thought, emotion, and putting that out to the field. And what perception helps you unlock the energy that helps you materialize your own dreams is very individual to you. So whereas one person can hold the perception that like, okay, it's a long-term vision. Oh my God, that relieves so much pressure from me. Like I'm just going to like go on my journey. And then every day they're showing up and they're like just so at peace with it being a journey and they're finding the fulfillment in the journey and that helps them materialize their dreams. And all of a sudden like they're recognizing that every day their dreams are becoming a reality. Whereas another person may be so fired up by like things dropping in in an instantaneous way, like an understanding the laws of the universe and like more so leaning into just like just the limitless possibilities and like it, expanding more into like just the spiritual truths and not so much like the 3D. And that can like fire them up and they can spend like 20 hours a day just in that that like energy cultivation meditation and then all of a sudden the things are dropping in and like that's their journey and it's really fun for them. So like it's a balance of finding like what works for you with like the 3D rules and then also like the freaking like 5D, 4D rules of limitless possibilities and us living in this divine matrix. You get to dissolve any perceptions that are making you feel an emotion or energy that you're recognizing oh this like isn't actually helping me show up as who I want to be in regards to this journey and this vision you get to do that dissolving work and like that's how powerful we are as beings is that like we can literally change the way we perceive something and it will change the way we feel ultimately changing the way that things materialize in our life with the magic of the universe you can just start to shift your perception on how things are 
and then you access an energy within you that changes the way things are as you change the, the way you look at things the things you look mm. at change so it's like yeah it's about being in the gratitude and being in the abundance but also like if you really do want something there's a way to hack the game <laughs> I'm just saying there's a way to hack the game <laughs> and it's through perception and it's through energy and this shit works <laughs> oh yeah for sure for real 100 percent. i mean those are like some of the most inspiring i feel like success stories is the people who literally came from nothing and they're like yes i believe and you're like damn so maybe it does work <laughs> no seriously that was a big part of my journey in the beginning i would watch the impact theory videos and Tom would interview a lot of people who were homeless and drug addicts and were living with abusive alcoholic parents and were thrown out to the street. Like there were so many videos, uh, podcast videos of him interviewing people that had those life progressions. And I would be so inspired listening to them because I'm like, holy crap, like if they can do it and I have all of this privilege mm -hmm. of like having a roof over my head and food on my plate i'm like then i can do it yeah. too yeah it's so powerful it's really just that that perspective change and um yeah if you guys are wanting to watch any of those those youtube videos i would definitely suggest going to tom bilio's page impact theory he interviews a lot of powerful thought leaders that are very successful and have fine-tuned their craft of whatever they're working in and a lot of the people he interviews have come from literally nothing. And it is wow. so eye-opening to see like, okay, changing your perspective and changing your self, um, self-concept mm. really does change the energy within that changes the way you move about the journey. And that's just another thing that I want to highlight here is when you're taking on the long-term mindset, it's not that like you're saying, oh, like, okay, fine. It's going to happen in like a hundred years. <laughs> What we're doing here is we're embodying a perspective that unlocks an energy that allows you to move through life mm -hmm. with less pressure and more power. Yeah. And that's all it is. Boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah. No, it really is so powerful. And it's like, yeah, it's always. Yeah, I think that's where the marrying of like the energetics and the action just takes you so far because you see how like it's all like leaving this energetic signature and it's changing the way you experience it and like that's really what I feel like the whole new paradigm thing is about is like okay we know how to make things happen by just moving the 3d like that's fine that's clear but like let's make it more meaningful and enjoyable and peaceful and like you know fulfilling and abundant and all the things because we know that you can literally have the million dollars dropped in your living room but if you aren't gonna like receive it and feel it and take it in then like what's like it, it not that doesn't actually mean anything other than the meaning you put to it right right and it is kind of a game of like looking around reality and starting to we just did this whole workshop on receiving within the oasis and one of the things i was talking about in that workshop was the art of receiving what's already in front of you and it's really really mind-blowing to just go into this journey of like seeing all of the abundance that is around you like when you have food on your plate just to like look at the beauty of like a home-cooked meal in front of you and to like feel into how rich you are in that yeah. moment and peter's best friend that lives down the street from us martin every single time we sit down to eat i've eaten a lot of meals with this man we lived in la with him not with him but down the street from him now we live down the street from him here in arizona and every single time we sit down to eat a meal he puts his hands over his food mm -hmm and does a moment of gratitude for his food beautiful i've never seen him eat without doing this wow Practice. and it's so beautiful and um the crazy part is about this journey is like you start changing your perspective on life and all of a sudden you start accessing these emotions within and you start to recognize the detachment part becomes so much easier because now your happiness isn't dependent on the thing mm. because you've realized that oh i can actually unlock this right now and i think that's where 
I was definitely suffering a lot in my past was because I was thinking that getting that thing was like the secret sauce to mm-hmm. life. And like once you get to the end goal, that's where like fulfillment is unlocked and peace is unlocked and 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 happiness and joy when that's yes, it comes like when you when you hit that freaking like I don't know like a follower count I remember I celebrated hitting like 100k on TikTok but then you celebrate it and then that feeling's gone (laughs) like it literally people think like it stays with you like you unlock the thing and then all of a sudden like you're at this like like life is so different yeah it's not like that it's yeah yeah very fleeting and in order to have the fulfillment and the happiness stay then we need to have it dependent on something that's not fleeting and what's not fleeting is you Mm. is the beingness that you are and all of the love that surrounds you and the air that is in the freaking ethers and all of the the leaves on the trees the leaves on the trees and the bugs around like i literally stare out my window sometimes and i'm like we live in a fucking video game where there's just like (laughs) look look at this 4k shit this is awesome (laughs) yeah literally like we're living in a freaking virtual reality and it's just pure magic and i think you experience more magic when you see the magic and i Mm. think the art of receival for what's here now is like the freaking secret sauce to living that fulfilling and happy life okay so i just want to add in here now like the the paradox of yes the long-term vision and yes that helps you alleviate pressure but also like we live in a magical fucking world And I want to just share this reminder that like you are interacting with this field around you always and we are such powerful beings like the power that you hold. I'm like looking at Bella here like because she's right in front of me like the power that you hold. We all have this divinity within us to collapse atoms into form. And that is a superpower that we have. And we have consciousness. We can we can self-regulate. We have these superpowers. We get to use those superpowers on this journey. And this is where we marry the two of like, okay, the 3D self, but also like I'm a fucking powerful spiritual mm-hmm. being. So it's like to embody the knowing that, yes, it's the long-term mindset while also playing life by the games of the quantum mm-hmm. world. Yeah which kind of they they go hand in hand and like this is what I'm really stressing of like being a big enough being to be with the truth of both of these because it's the long-term mindset that helps you access the energy that helps you play the quantum game yeah right right is this yeah like well because they're both- I'm like wondering if I'm like no, no no it makes sense and it's like ultimately it's two sides of the same coin like that's the world that we're yes. living in is like yes there's like what we would call the 3d and there's what we call the quantum but it's actually all the same thing like it's all one part of what we're living in and for most people they misperceive the world that we live in and think it that it's really just all this like physical matter against each other and seeing into the unseen and like the energetics in the field that's what unlocks our power because that is actually who we really are and so being reminded of that and having the intention to practice that every day like that's what reminds us and what I was going to say too is like if you're listening to this and you're like damn I am like not in a long-term mindset I've like forgotten a bit of my power with that like just know it's totally okay and like it is also like we're living in a time that it's not exactly we're not taught it's not no. it's like frankly the opposite is like there's so many forces and influences to convince you otherwise that like we're really pushed to forget this and so it's okay if like you haven't been in that mindset and you've been forgetting your power and you've been so focused on the short term or whatever it is that it's okay and like that is why we're having these conversations and why we bring this consciousness to what we do and why you've been called to this type of path is so you can remember that and play with it and test things out and see what kind of world it creates within you and around you and it's also just 
I think honestly normal and very sometimes important part of the path to forget that and to like realize like, damn, I actually can, you know, feel the presence now and feel happy and feel fulfilled. And I can also hold the vision of my future. And I, I don't have to give that up just because it's, you know, in my mind, like I can hold both and be with both. And like, I can live this middle way and be multi-dimensional. Thank you for saying that part because it truly is not our fault at all. Any perceptions that we have. Yeah. Like this world of social media and immediate gratification and all this stuff, like it kind of brainwashes yeah. us to forget about how everything is like a process and a journey. Mm -hmm. And it is such a paradox to be in. And I think where you can really take this into your own hands as a listener, if you're like, okay, where do I even like take this? Just start to think about what are the perceptions that give you the deepest sense of empowerment and freedom because you may resonate more with holding that vision so tight to you mm. that may activate a power within you where you're waking up every day you're feeling present with the process and it lights a fire under your ass where you feel whole and just like in your power and it helps you or it may be the opposite and maybe there's a part of you that's holding on to it where it actually is making you feel like not mm. enough. And this was a part of my journey of like really honoring where I'm at and to see the sacredness in the moment and to also know that the vision, I talk about this all the time, but like we just posted a, a clip about this, how the vision is there as a goalpost to show you the being yeah. that you're meant to step into. And this is where it becomes like a really fun, immersive game of using the vision to, like I said, reverse engineer in that uh, magnetism episode, episode 42, reverse engineer the vision to feel into the state of being that you are embodying in that vision. And when you start to take that into the energy work and the, this is an inner game type of work, that's where the miracles pop in and like I really really want to stress this here because this is where you start to open up that communication with the universe and start to co-create when you give yourself permission to feel the way that you think you'll feel at the end you give yourself permission to do the work of accessing that in the now that is where the magic unfolds mm. And like that is such a, a powerful thing to remember because yes, the vision is there and yes, it may be out in the future, but you have access to miracles when you use that as the goalpost to open up an energy within you. And this is where healing work comes in because you're like, okay, like I'm not feeling that at all right now, mm. but you are such a powerful being that you actually can feel that right now by making some perception ad adjustments or by doing some somatic work or by seeing things differently like I said perception change mm -hmm. and this is where the healing work comes in and this is where the becoming journey comes in and this is where your soul is like yep we're doing it right she's listening she's doing the healing work she's releasing these outdated perceptions that are not meant to come with her because really the person who is at the end goal if you feel into that, they're fulfilled, they're at peace, mm. they're happy, they're living in a state of joy. And that's the being that your soul is saying, you're ready. Like you're ready to embody this mm. now. And I always add this in here that it's like, you're listening now because you're ready. And I kind of feel like a broken record saying that because there can be the tendency to feel shame of like, why haven't I felt this way mm -hmm. yet? Or it's because the way you have been feeling up until this point was a very sacred part of the path. Yeah. Like the dips are so sacred. Like you go through deep remembering and you like work on things from an angle that you wouldn't have if you weren't feeling that. Right. And it's a part of the journey. So give yourself grace Give yourself compassion 
and understand that you're never out of alignment. I mean, I say the term like getting into alignment, but like you're really never out of it. You're never off your soul's path. You're never out of alignment. You're always on the journey. You're always in a state of becoming. And these are reminders you get to have that, again, just help you alleviate that pressure. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A fucking men. You guys are doing incredible. Yeah. We're doing incredible. Snaps for and everyone. Just, yeah, <laughs> truly. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. And just a little reminder to use the OM code with your Magic Mind per, uh, purchase. We'll put that down below. It's OM with three O's, 20, yep. right? Or you can click on the link and it will automatically apply the discount at your checkout. So thank you guys for listening. Leave a comment, leave a review, engage in the Spotify prompt that's there. And we will see you guys next week. We love Bye. you.